What is up, everyone? My name is Lauren Wilson. So I have run 50 miles at a sub seven minute pace. I've run 100 kilometers at a sub seven minute, 15 second per mile pace. And I am currently training for the Black Canyon 100 kilometer February 8th, 2025. And so this is just my run vlog. I'm hoping that by sharing my training journey that you can gain some tangible tips to apply to your own training and then also maybe get some mental tips and then have it's also good just to know that someone else is is training and being a part of a broader community adds more meaning and more purpose to your training and I know that by sharing my journey it also adds a lot more meaning and purpose as well to to my running and so I've been running, I'm 33 years old, I've been running at a high level since I was 12, so I've been doing over 20 years now, I've coached thousands of, of people, I've coached state champions, I've consulted with other elite ultra runners, Olympic trials, qualifiers, and I've worked at Run Lab, which is full body, head to toe, run form analysis, where we build the physical therapy plan around your running mechanics. Um, I ran my times at the 2019 Brazos Ultra Marathon in um, Houston, Texas, and then I went into public accounting, worked a desk job, and I realized how much that really wrecked my body. And so this is kind of me rebuilding my body, rebuilding my mind, and rebuilding my soul for ultra. And so I'm going to do this a week by week, just kind of share my my running, share my training. So with that, let's go ahead and just dive right into my Strava here. And so right now I'm about seven months out from the event. And so I'm in what's called base phase. And so I want to work backwards from February 8th. Where do I need to be 12 weeks out from the race? Because that last 10 to 12 weeks leading up to the race is what we call the specific block of training and so if i'm going to run 100 kilometers at black canyon that's going to be seven and a half to 10 hours on my feet and everything that goes into that so i'm kind of building up towards that but in the base phase not really working on specificity so much i'm working on what we call polarized training and so i'm working on working on my athletic base, working on my biomechanics, doing things that look very much like the new hybrid movement. I hate to use the words CrossFit or hybrid. However, people are familiar with those words. And so a lot of my training looks like that right now where I'm lifting weights, I'm doing sprints, I'm doing drills. And then I'm also just building up my, my overall capacity to work. I'm building up my habits, so just dialing in nutrition, dialing in hydration, getting good sleep patterns, but making sure that I'm enjoying the process because seven months is a long time to be dedicated at that level towards one hard task. And so what does this look like? On Monday, you can see what I'm doing is uh, twice a week doing some mileage, some drills on a hill and then a steady mile. And a lot of people this week were commenting that I'm really good at negative split. So getting faster as the run goes on. And let me kind of show you what that means. So you can see here on the Monday morning, my first mile was about a 747. And then every mile, I'm doing a good job of dropping the pace. And so why do I do that? A couple of different reasons. One is... The first few miles, my body is just warming up. It's not really fully awake. The nervous system is warming up. I might feel uncoordinated for the first few miles. And so I don't want to force anything. And so during the base training, you never really want to go to the well. You hear a lot about this zone two training. And, and yes, that for the most part, you're in that zone two, zone three for the majority of your training, I'm never finishing a run at this time of my training block where I'm just on the ground completely exhausted. I'm actually trying to finish every run full of run, full of energy, 
and what I like to call with one still in the chamber, right? I'm not unloading the chamber. And so pretty much every single day, that's what I'm doing is I, as I start off, the body warms up and then I'm starting to work these different paces and work these different energy systems. And while the pace looks a lot faster, in all reality, it's actually not that big of an intensity change because once I warm up, once my breathing's warmed up, once my heart rate's warmed up, once my nervous system warms up, these last few miles are, aren't that much more difficult than these early miles, especially just doing about one or two of them. That really doesn't take a whole lot out. Just for context, I've run also a 237 mile or 237 marathon, two hour, 37 minute marathon multiple times now. And like I was saying, I've run 50 miles at a sub seven minute pace. So these faster miles aren't necessarily very taxing, especially if there's just one or two of them. So you can see it did a six mile warm up there. Just gradually easing into it, getting some time on my feet. And then I have a hill that I like to use. It's not that steep. And so what I do is I do side shuffles. So that's like playing defense and basketball. And I'll probably get some videos of these for you guys. Then I do karaoke. So it's kind of where you cross your feet, do that dance lateral motion. And so I want to work laterally because your muscles and your joints and your tendons and your body let me pause for a second. This really stuck with me. In middle school, a coach once told me, a, a better athlete is a faster athlete. And I agree with that 100%. And so the body was made to move in multiple planes of motion. And if you neglect a plane of motion, what you're doing is you're lowering the overall absolute capacity of the body, of the muscles and the tendons and the joints to function in that plane of motion. So if your muscles work in the side to side plane and you never work them in the side to side plane, your absolute max for the capacity or the ability to use that muscle in that plane starts to shrink. And so now when you're running, you're using a higher percentage of the absolute max of that muscle, which is going to lead to fatigue. And so that's the same concept behind weight training for runners. If you only work a certain range of motion and over and over and over again, well, your absolute max in that range of motion, if you don't stress it as well with higher loads, eventually that absolute max is going to shrink and you're using a higher relative percentage of that max. Whereas if you use strength training, you raise that max while still having it functional and specific for running. You don't need to be a bodybuilder, but you want to raise the absolute force that that muscle can produce in that 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 specific motion now you're using a lower relative max which is also another reason that you want to work on speed training as an ultra runner and so for going back to these drills i do side shuffles for about 30 seconds up the hill walk down karaoke is 30 seconds up the hill walk down butt kicks skips high knees backwards running and then i do a combination of drills because i want to spend about a mile going up and down the hill, working my body through these different ranges of motion. And then you can see I do a mile steady. And so just working on mechanics, working on form. So that's Monday. That's what I'm doing. And then in Monday afternoon, I did some weight training. And so specifically right now, what I'm doing is I'm working a lot on stability. So if you're programming and periodizing your training, you always are going to work on all the different components. So we have stability, strength, and power, also known as plyometrics or velocity training. So power, you can work on jump, box jumps, broad jumps, skips, single leg jumps. Um, also, you can do moving a barbell really fast through the air, though, or moving a kettlebell very fast through the air. So there's different ways to produce higher amounts of power. And so you're always working on all of the, and that's very simplified version, right? But you always are working on all the components. It's just as you go through your training blocks building up to your race, the emphasis or the percentage of time and energy you're dedicating to each is shifted. And so your base is your stability. 
you're working on a lot of the tiny muscles that a lot of people neglect. The tiny muscles in your feet, the tiny muscles around your pelvis or in your glutes, and the tiny muscles in your abdominals and in your spine. So it's a lot of slower controlled muscles, more isometric movements rather than pushing a bunch of weight for a bunch of reps. And again, I'll get some more video for you guys to to see what that means rather than just hearing me talk about it. But imagine band walks, standing on one leg and doing a lot of different balance exercises, maybe some push-ups, pull-ups, but slow doing some bench press, but but slow, doing some different core holds, but slow, slow skipping. Everything's just kind of slow and controlled in that in that weight training with a little bit, like I said, a little bit of strength and a little bit of power, but about 80 to 90% of it is going to be stability focused. And then on Tuesday, so I work out every single day. I am doing 75 hard right now, but even when I'm not doing 75 hard or live hard, I am active every single day. The body was made to move. If we weren't living in the times that we live now, you would either be walking to work, farming, doing some sort of construction job. You wouldn't be driving. You wouldn't be sitting a whole lot. So the body was made to move and it was made to move through different various ranges of motion under various loads every single day. And so if you can't move, if you're limping and you're too stiff, well, that means you worked out way too hard, but you can still do something. You can do sauna, you can do cold plunge, you can do meditation, you can do active dynamic yoga. This isn't the episode for this an argument about yoga, but I'm a big proponent of yoga if you're doing it correctly just like anything any everything has its pros and cons if you're doing it correctly there's going to be benefits of it if you're doing it in moderation and you're in control of it it's not becoming an idol or an addiction there's some benefit to it so anyways i do a lot of walking um outside of running i'm a management consultant and i am an online run coach so the lots of responsibility just being a human being and so what i have found is walking not only gets my blood flowing, makes me feel good, lowers anxiety, it allows me to process information. And so I have to do a lot of thinking and a lot of processing of information. And running is really good. It clears the mind, gives you that runner's high, makes you feel really good, optimizes that well-being, increases the productivity of the rest of the day. But sometimes during the running, I get into a flow state and I'm not able to really process information. So the walking allows me to to process information. So that's kind of what I did that that morning. And then that evening, so probably Tuesday night, just did some foam rolling, some stretching, that kind of stuff, and um, some more stability, band work, core work. So I try to hit that every single day. Your nervous system is an information processing machine. It is software that you are literally coding. So through repetition, that's how you're going to build up those movement efficiencies. So then I go to Wednesday, kind of same as Monday, right? I, I did my morning miles a little bit more on the warm up than I did on Monday, but not not too much more. But you can see again those negative splits started off even slower on Wednesday, which makes sense. Oh, that was my second session on Tuesday. I, I am in jujitsu. So I did a morning walk and then I did jujitsu. And then in the afternoon I did some more mobility on Tuesday. So Wednesday Already kind of tired, already kind of sore. I've only been doing jiu-jitsu for, since the beginning of April, so my body's still adjusting to it, but in a good way. I feel strong, feel more coordinated, feel more, more full, like my body's connected, working together, synchronized unit. But on Wednesdays, I'm pretty tired from work and everything else. So as you can see, start off slow, then I warm up, kind of finish just as the body gives me there. And then I stop again, and I do my drills again on Wednesday. I do my drills. I'm also in Phoenix, Arizona, so it's about 90 degrees at 6 a.m., so it's super hot. And then I did another steady mile. So I'm working 
those different paces, working on my athleticism. And then as you can see, another weight training session. And then Thursday, same thing. I did a morning walk, went to jiu-jitsu. Friday, I did a morning walk, went to jiu-jitsu. And then Saturday, you can see I did a run, started it before 5 a.m. It was already 90 degrees. Been working on different hydration strategies for this one. I didn't run with any water for the first 12 and a half miles, and I regret it big time. Um, not, not so much during the run. I did start to hurt around mile 10 without the, the water and the salt, but really it affected my recovery post run. The rest of the day, I just didn't have a lot of energy, went to bed before 7 p.m., and so before before the Saturday run, though, this is a good tidbit, I prehydrate, so the night before, have some good protein. So that's another thing is right now during the base phase, I'm not eating a ton of carbs. I'm eating more of protein fat with good carbs, so probably about 50 to 60% protein fat and then 40 to 50% carbohydrate. So trying to build up my fat utilization because – Yes, I'm going to train my gut to take in carbohydrate during the 100 kilometer, but I want to be very efficient at utilizing my fat storage because it's not that high of an intensity, not that high of a heart rate for the ultra running. And then if I can, there's two, there's two trains of thought. Some people are train your gut to take in as many carbohydrates as possible. Other people are train it to not be reliant on that, to minimize the probability of you getting gut distress. And so I'm just still tinkering with it, to be honest. I haven't started messing around with carbohydrate intake just because I I don't like to do that until I get to around two hours and I'm only running long runs only at about an hour and a half right now. But I will start playing around with that soon. Because I am going to start incorporating just like two to three hour more like hybrid hike slash jog slash rucks out on trails just to get time on feet, not really worrying about pace. The emphasis for that will be more of time on feet, becoming aware of my body, its sensations, what is it craving, what does it like, how good is it at digestion and everything. Right now, though, I am still working on a relatively higher intensity. So this was all done in 90 plus degree weather, as you can see. Negative splits, bringing it down, nice close, felt really, really good. Um, so, yeah, nothing special there. Just kind of showing you that. A nice loop, cadence, temperature. So, yeah, going back. And then after that, Saturday night, I did some foam rolling. Right, did some afternoon yoga, did some foam rolling, just kind of unglued the hips, the the glutes, kind of really focused on, if you're going to use your time, yes, find the tension areas, get aware of your body, but try to focus on the spine and the pelvis. So that's where most of your movement is generated from. And so if you can get your pelvic mechanics and your spinal mechanics nice and efficient and smooth, try to get away of the adhesions and the restrictions around there, Kind of everything else will tend to, to fall into place. Not always. Sometimes you have to focus on unjamming an ankle or unjamming a shoulder or something. But for the most part, not everyone has three hours, two and a half, three hours a day to dedicate. I don't have a family. I don't have a significant other. So besides work and church and running and training, that's all I really like to do. I don't watch Netflix. I don't do any of that stuff. And then, yeah, Sunday morning, so this morning I did a bike ride, hour and a half. And so that's another thing to – someone was asking me this today, the cycling benefit you're running, and the answer is absolutely. So especially if you're not – it benefits everybody's running, but especially if you're you're a lower mileage, which is what most people are, not a lot of people can handle 70, 80-plus miles a week of running – but so if you want to improve, you still need to get your aerobic capacity up. And cycling is a really good way to do that because it's also rhythmic, similar to running. But then also, if your body is imbalanced, running is going to expose that. And it's going to really break down your body. If you're on a bike, 
yes, you can have strength and power differences, but the bike pedals are moving at the same range of motion and at a similar cadence or else the bike won't work. So just due to the nature of cycling, it can really start to help put your body back in balance and it really strengthens up your calves, your glutes, your hamstrings, your quads, and it's not so much pounding. So I find that that cycling not only improves my cardiovascular capacity, but it also, or my, and my muscular endurance, it also just loosens me up for the most part. I always feel really good. And then you get that uh, circulation, you get that blood flow. So if you take in sodium and you're taking in nutrients, you can start to enhance recovery because that's how you recover is the blood flow carries nutrients to the muscles, to the tendons and to the joints. So you can do that in a, in a non-impact way. So this was my first group ride of the block. So again, I'm seven months out. I usually do cycle quite a bit to get ready for ultra. And so I will start incorporating at least one, if not two harder bike rides. And so that's kind of the rhythm that I'm going to have here um, for, for the next few months. Again, I'm seven months out. For the next three months, I will continue. Well, let me pause for a second. For the next six weeks or so, the rhythm will kind of stay the same. Um, maybe start to add a little bit more running, but and add another cycling session or so. But for the most part, this rhythm is going to stay the same, just a little bit more intensity and a little bit more volume. And then on September 21st, I am going to do a 55-kilometer race in Flagstaff. So what we got, we got to August, September, got about eight weeks. And so what you'll see is that my long run on Saturday will start to go up, and I will start to hammer out the last few miles of that long run. And then I'll double back with a hard bike ride like this. And then most likely what you'll see is on Wednesdays, I might start doing some more traditional aerobic capacity runs. So for instance, eight mile tempos, 10 mile tempos, two by three mile, three by three miles. So traditional aerobic capacity, marathon specific work. And if I just do one of those a week, that doesn't really break down my body per se. And so start doing um, that kind of work just to get ready. So some 10K half marathon, marathon pace work over the next six to eight weeks to get ready for that race and then deload and start uh, entering that, that next block. So yeah, that's the training for the week. Don't have a lot other stuff to say. Just um, just keep getting after it. You know, my mindset's in a in a good spot, and I'm I'm re really ready to to turn myself inside out. I love this lifestyle. I love the discipline of training for a race. I love the journey. I love the more so not not so much the physical challenge. I love the mental challenge. I love to wrestle with my mind. I love to wrestle with my thoughts. And, and, the, and the important thing to remember is while you are training for a specific event on a specific date, that's one day out of many days. And so it's, it's, it's winning each day. It's executing each day. It's setting a really hard goal that stretches you, that motivates you, that gets you to dream, that gets you to think big. And it's working backwards and it's having the discipline to execute each day what needs to be done regardless of how you feel. And as I was saying, that doesn't necessarily mean let's go do this hard run and collapse. What you need that day, and you have to know yourself, you have to have self-awareness because a lot of people, they do just run themselves into the ground, and that's not what they need. They already know they can do that. The real discipline is in the little things. Can you slow down? Can you do a recovery run? Can you do a recovery workout? Can you do sauna, cold plunge? Can you take a day off? Can you do the things you may not necessarily like, such as focus on hydration and nutrition? And I'm in that camp. I am a very boo kind of person where it's go, 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 go. And I've crossed, I've crossed that line. So the challenge for me in this training block is can I be at peace? Can I be patient? Can I be calm, cool? and collected and can I enjoy 
the easier days? And can I enjoy the nuances of the sport, such as slowing down to make sure I execute on hydration, slowing down to execute on nutrition? So, yeah, if you watch this episode, thank you so much. I don't take for granted your time or your energy. I hope you got something from this. If you did, please share the channel with a friend. Please hit subscribe. Or if you have any other thoughts or if you want to share your running journey, what you're training for. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment. And uh, yeah, let's just support each other, hold each other accountable, and build each other up. All right, love y'all. Have a great one. Bye. Get after it this week.